Good afternoon, everybody. Matt M. Roy back again. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, as most of you guys know, I'm not really into laptops. My forte is mainly uh, desktops, and I like tablets, too. But I've had this computer for a while now, and I just saw... Um, I don't know if you guys watch B Bishop PCM, um, but he just did a review on a ThinkPad that he had a while back, the uh, 760XL, which got me to thinking that I should probably review a ThinkPad that I've had. Um, this is uh, an older ThinkPad, around the same generation as B Bishop's. Um, not the same model, though. This is, let me see if I can, <laughs> it is very heavy. If you look on the bottom here, this is a... 20 type 2635 and it is from 1998 uh, let's see and yes this is very heavy I would say this weighs all of 8 to 10 pounds which they were back in the late 90s um, I actually picked this laptop up um, gosh I'm trying to think it was at a thrift store probably about four or five years ago and I normally wouldn't buy something like this, but at the time I, I wanted to get into Windows 95, 98 gaming. And I decided, you know what, for what they were asking, and that was $5 because it was didn't have a power cord or anything, I figured I couldn't go wrong. Now, I actually had a couple of power cords. I'll show you the one that I'm using right now. It's not the original one that would have came with it. It's actually for a much newer IBM ThinkPad. Um, let me see if you can see it right there. It's 16 volt, 4.5 amps. But it works just fine. IBM was one of those companies that pretty much never changed their power supply design. So I could use one that's probably only four or five years old. But whenever you plug a, a, an unknown power supply to a laptop, you always want to make sure it matches the volts and the amps because you could do irreversible damage to the machine. Well, let's go ahead and look at this machine a little bit closer. Now, I have to put this down to open it because it actually has two clips that you have to push to the right to open the screen up. And this is what the laptop looks like inside. It's just standard uh, late 90s IBM ThinkPad. It has a uh, Pentium, Intel Pentium processor running at 120 megahertz. The sticker that was there, I believe, would have originally said um, designed for Windows 95, Windows NT. But it never had that ever since I got it. Yes, and just like uh, B. Bishop's, it is coated in this rubber formula that's over the plastic. And as you can see on this laptop, it's actually in pretty good shape. No, Not a lot of wear. These, like you said, tend to wear off pretty quickly. Now, if you look on the keyboard in here, you can see a little bit more wear. Like on the space bar, you can see the shiny part right there. Um, yeah, the A and the S key have some wear on it, but the coating, the white coating for the letters are just fine. Um, this does not have a touchpad. Back then, it was just this track point. What you would do is you would move this, you'd move your finger around on this ball, and that would move the mouse on the screen, and then you would left and right click like you would a regular mouse. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of this. It takes a lot of getting used to. I'm used to just a regular mouse. I'm not even crazy about the uh, trackpads on modern laptops. Um, now let's go around with some of the ports. One nice feature about this are the speakers. Right on front are the two speaker grills, and you can look in there and see these are pretty good size for a laptop. Um, when I turn on, you'll hear how good these actually sound. One for the left and one for the right, so stereo sound. Let's go around to the side here. <clears throat> On the side we have your standard, uh, it's a 24 speed CD-ROM drive and under that you actually have a three and a half inch floppy drive. So unlike the one that B. Bishop has, uh, this one you don't have to switch out the floppy and the CD drive. They're actually both in there. They can be pulled out but I've never had a reason to because that's everything I would need. Right here you have a ventilator, probably, I believe that's where the CPU is, so it can get a lot of cool air in and out. Under that is something you don't see every day. This is actually an infrared port, and at first, just feeling this because it feels kind of rough and I was looking at it, I thought that this feature wasn't installed on this laptop, but if you go into the BIOS, it does say that there is infrared on this laptop. 
Um, it's not really that useful anymore, um, but one thing I could use it for, and I've never tried this, is my HP 2200 actually has an infrared port on it. So theoretically, I could set up this laptop um, to print wirelessly to that via the uh, infrared port. And that would be nice because I actually don't have any wireless capabilities in this laptop. I know you could add a wireless card to it, but I haven't actually gotten one to try and do that. Let's go to the back here. On the back, there would have originally been a door here. Um, it was missing when I got it. Uh, no big deal. I probably would have taken it off anyway for convenience. But back here you have the uh, standard 15-pin uh, DB or VGA port. Parallel port, serial port. Yes, as old as this one is, it does have one USB 1.1 port. And I can't tell you how nice that is to have, especially when I was trying to reinstall Windows and I needed to find drivers on my uh, quad core. I was able to use a thumb drive with this, even though it's running uh, Windows 98. And I was, a I was able to download via the floppy the Windows 98 um, USB pen driver. And then I could go ahead and get all my drivers via the USB port. Right here you have your power port. And this one I believe is a keyboard port. Let me, let me look closer here. Yeah, that's actually for an external mouse or a keyboard. It, it says mouse, but you could probably use it for a keyboard as well. Alright, coming over to this side of the computer we have the power switch, which is... <laughs> I, by today's standards, that's ridiculous, but that's kind of what they used back then. Uh, here we have what looks like um, VGA, out, I'm sorry, a composite out. Yep, that is composite out right there, and next to that is just your headphone port. Now right here, this is actually a volume knob. You can see it goes from 0 to 5. So, unlike today's computers, where you have to usually use a function key to adjust the volume here, just do it like an old-time Walkman. <laughs> All right, and in front of there, we have these uh, PC, PC card slots. This one is populated, and to be honest with you, I don't even remember what's in here. Okay, this is a uh, Ethernet card, because this does not have built-in Ethernet. Um, the way these would work is you would actually put, just put the card in here, and there would be a little cable... Let's see if I can get that in. You gotta fold that in so it doesn't break. There'd be a little cable that would go from here, and the other and the other end would actually be the Ethernet port. I believe I have that cable, but I'd have to do some searching to find out where it is. And we got two of those on here. This right here, I believe, is the CMOS battery, which I do need to replace in this because I don't think it's totally bad, but it is low. Um, I'll have to check out on the internet on that later, but I believe that's what that is, the, the CMOS battery goes. And this right here is uh, probably, it's not used in this laptop, but it was probably for some other feature, um, maybe an internal modem, or maybe even some of these may have had an internal Ethernet card, but I'm sure that's what that was for originally. And there is another model number on this laptop. I just noticed this. It is the ThinkPad 380XD. Um, this is actually probably slightly newer than the one that uh, B. Bishop had. Uh, ju I'm just guessing because his did not have a USB port and this does have a USB port. But um, unfortunately this laptop is not in quite as good a condition as his is. If you look on the top here... You can see that somebody uh, actually wrote on it with a Sharpie pen. I'm, I'm, that's the model number. I don't know why they did that. And it's got some light scratches on it. But other than that, it's in decent shape. So let's go ahead and plug it in real quick. As you can see, as soon as I plug it in, the battery starts charging. The battery in here does hold a small charge. I would say it holds maybe a 30 to 40 percent charge, because it'll last about an hour, but the only bad thing is it'll just die. It doesn't even warn you that it's going low. The computer will just turn off. So I'll probably, I'll probably when I get some extra money, get that battery recorded. But until then, I don't mind running it on the AC adapter. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Again, it's the switch here. 
you can see everything lights up screen should come on that's one other issue this screen really has quite a bit of wear on it you can see that uh, it's been used a lot it actually has some burning because I believe this is what they call a passive matrix screen has 97 megabytes of memory and is coming up with some error codes because the battery the regular battery and the CMOS battery are dead but I should just be able to go and click OK here and it's just asking me to set the date and time which I'm not even going to bother doing right now because it's not hooked up to the internet just click OK here and it should just start booting Windows it'll actually repost itself just to make sure that it's it's gonna run properly because it, during that first post it automatically set up should have automatically set up the hard drive and all the other uh, per, uh, other peripherals in the computer there you go Microsoft Windows 98 originally this would have shipped with Microsoft Windows 95 but I'm a bit I just prefer Windows 98 and with that big of memory upgrade in this it runs just fine She is a little slow booting up. I, I think this hard drive might have some stiction issues, which is very funny because I don't. This is not one of those MFM hard drives. I've done actual uh, hard. I've done hard drive tests on this. I've done um, DFT drive fitness test. I've run the Western Digital uh, Caviar DOS version test, and they both pass just fine. But I still think this hard drive has got some wear on it. Log in with my password. You'll hear these speakers. Hmm. I'm not sure why the speakers didn't go off. Oh. You know what? That was my fault, guys. I had it turned all the way down. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll log off and try that again. Yeah, you can hear for a laptop, those speakers have nice sound. I actually was using this as a uh, MP3 player for a while. So here's the Windows 98 desktop. Bear with me, because I'm not used to using this kind of uh, track point. Go into Properties. And it's uh, Microsoft Windows 98, second edition. It is registered to me. Pentium processor with 96 megabytes of RAM. And Windows 98 does not tell you what the processor speed is, but I looked it up online. This is a 120 megahertz Pentium processor. It's only slightly faster than uh, my original Compaq. I wish I still had that. We look at the devices here. CD-ROM is a Sanyo, and that is a 24 speed. Let's see. Got a generic floppy and a generic disk controller. That's for the hard drive. The display adapter in this is something I've never even heard before. It's a Neo Magic Magic Graph 128XD. As far as I know, these were only used in IBM um, ThinkPads. I've never heard of these before. And then you got the floppy disk and the hard drive controller. Uh, there you go, some information about that there, just the bus information. And as you can see, like I said before, it does have an infrared device installed. Um, I might give that a try later, see if I can, just for fun, see if I can get it to work with my printer. Uh, keyboard, standard 100-1-2 keyboard. Monitor, default monitor, doesn't, I'm not even sure what they used in here. Other than I know it is passive matrix, not active matrix, because when you play games, you see tons of ghosting with this. It's one reason why I haven't really used this for gaming much. 
mouse, PS2 compatible mouse port, which is actually that thing on the back. So I'm not even sure how it's find where it's finding the track point here. Uh, network adapter. Let's look at that real quick. That should have found that 3Com. Yep, there you go. 3Com Etherlink 3, which is a PCM CIA card. And it also detects the uh, infrared port and just a few other dial-up adapters there, but not too much in this computer. Very uh, consistent for the time it was made. Uh, the PCM CIA slot. Some information about that. Regular ports right there. And sound and video. This actually has the uh, Crystal PNP audio system. Um, Crystal is the chip they used in the uh, Turtle Beach Santa Cruz uh, sound cards back in the late 90s. And I think that's why the sound is incredible because I've used those cards in many builds back in the day and they just have phenomenal sound. Any, ten times better than anything else you could get on the market. So that's another reason why I love this laptop is, is mainly for the sound quality. And it does have USB. It is just 1.1, but it's again, it's nice to have that one USB port. Now we can go into the uh, hard drive here. Here are all the drives. You got the floppy drive, A, C drive, which is the hard drive, and then the CD-ROM, which is the D. Go into properties here. And it is a 3 gigabyte hard drive, which is actually fairly big for the time. Uh, at this time, I saw some laptops only coming with 1 and 2 gig drives. So it makes me think this drive may have been replaced at one time. Um, be honest with you, I've never dug that deep in this laptop because uh, it actually seemed to work just fine when I got it. So that is an overview of my ThinkPad 380XD. Um, I guess I could show you guys what I have installed on it real quick. Not too much right now. It's just, um, the only game I have right now on is DX Ball, um, which is a, is a, not, it's a pretty cool game, but again, um, it's got a lot of ghosting when you play it. I'll boot it up real quick. I don't want to show too much of this because of the copyright police. Let's see if it'll just do. Uh, here we go. I don't know how well the camera can pick it up, but you can see when the ball moves, you can see a lot of ghosting right there. It's actually much worse in person. Um, it's almost the point where I wouldn't really, w I don't really want to use this as a gaming computer. I I'd love to find a vintage uh, laptop like this that has a active matrix screen, something that is much better for gaming. I know Road Geek had that problem too. That's all I want to show of that. <laughs> but yeah, so that is a review of my ThinkPad. And if you guys like this, please remember to like and subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and shut it down real quick. I'll do the Alt F4. And then I should just need to hit OK. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a blessed day, everyone.